the Fountain of Youth Park in St. Augustine, Florida. Does St. Augustine have a theme park? I don't know. Let's find out, shall we? I decided to head down to St. Augustine, Florida, and I'm here checking out the Fountain of Youth Park. Now this is quite a peculiar attraction. What's interesting about this place is it has a very, very long history. This uh, place opened back in the 1860s originally as a tourist attraction. You know, they were touting the freshwater well as being the, the Fountain of Youth that uh, Ponce de Leon was searching for when he was uh, traveling the world. Obviously, I mean, I drank from the water, I feel pretty young today, so who knows, maybe that actually does work. As for the other attractions, it occurred to me as I was walking around this place that it almost is a theme park. They've got all these little attractions, whether it's the, the Discovery Globe, the Planetarium, the Timakulin Village the archaeology exhibit where they um, unearthed an actual um, Spanish settlement from like the 1500s uh, all these different uh, attractions you know they're probably only a ride or two away from being a full-fledged theme park and they definitely have the room to do it so who knows maybe they actually do become a real theme park as someone who uh, is used to paying you know, 100 to 120 dollars for the day to get into a theme park. This was a nice change of pace. Um, adults here run about 18 dollars to get in. Seniors are about 17 dollars. Uh, children 6 to 12. The admission price drops to 10 dollars, and all children five and under uh, get free admission. So the admission price is pretty reasonable and. If you wanted to, you could probably stretch this into a full day attraction if you're taking your family because there are you know, plenty of places to sit down, um, all the buildings are air conditioned, you know, like the planetarium and the Discovery Globe and everything. So if you're trying to stretch a full day, you could probably pull it off. Realistically though, this park is probably about a three hour experience if you want to see everything. and explore the entire 15 acres. This place is really interesting to visit. It's got that old Florida roadside attraction vibe to it because that's basically what it is. This has been one of those old Florida attractions that has survived and even thrived a little bit. I mean when I was here uh, this was post pandemic and the place was still packed with people. What's also kind of neat is it's almost like a time capsule because when you're walking around these attractions they're all vintage. You can see how primitive a lot of them are. A lot of this stuff was built, you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago. And it's still running the same attractions. And it, it's, it really is nice. It's, it reminds me of all those kind of silly science museums and uh, local parks that I used to go on in field trips. And if you're kind of looking for a little piece of nostalgia, this is a great place to visit. Right now I'm exploring the San Augustine Watchtower. So apparently they used to protect the port with all these giant cannons and basically blast holes in ships that um, were, I guess, considered unfriendly to the settlers who were here. They do a nice little weapons demonstration and I filmed part of it. You know, you can see the, the guy shooting the, uh, the bow and arrow or crossbow um, earlier in this video. They also fire one of the big cannons and I'll tell you, that cannon is super loud, as you can imagine, so I thought about including it in this video, but it really did uh, blast my speakers, so I removed it. What's the bottom line for the Fountain of Youth Park? This is clearly one of the best tourist attractions in all of St. Augustine. It's a great value, there's a lot to see and do here, and you can spend several hours just 
seeing all the different exhibits and interactive displays. I will say this, it's probably not worth it if you're talking about a day with inclement weather because most of the attractions at this place are outdoors. I would say about 40% of them are indoors, so if it's raining or the weather sucks, I would probably skip it and return to this place uh, when the weather is uh, beautiful like it is today. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like and subscribe.